Hey everyone, Rob Van Dyson here again. Once again, up at Hobble Creek in my usual spot. Got a little bit of a fire going, so you're, you're going to occasionally see me get a face full of smoke. And today is the 22nd of November, 2020. And honestly, it's been a bit of an interesting week for me. Not a bad week by any means, but it's been a week where it's been really hard for me to focus. And, you know, usually I listen to a lot of podcasts and I just haven't been able to get into them. Um, you know, I'll start listening to them, start getting a little bored, just get distracted, and I've honestly been listening to music most of this week uh, while at work and while doing other things. You know, I've started a few podcasts, listened to them for, you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes, pause them, switch over to music, go back to the podcast. Um, podcasts, you know, topics I'd usually be interested in, I'm just skipping them. But it was rather interesting because two of the podcasts I listened to actually started talking about religion. And one of the podcasts, uh, Unloose the Goose, the one that they put out last Wednesday, was about organized religion. And honestly, they just started rubbing me the wrong way. Um, I don't consider myself highly religious. You know, I do have my own belief systems which I've been examining recently, and I was like, okay, I was born and raised in a religion, a particular religion, and um, looking back, I've noticed that a lot of things I've done, I did just because that's what was expected out of my religion. And when a, there was a major thing that I should have done at a certain age that I didn't. And... Honestly, I've never really regretted that decision. Um, and most of the people who would have really looked down on me uh, for making the decision not to do that, I really don't care about their opinion. But, you know, even though I've probably been at the most non-religious um, mindset that in my entire life, um, for the last several months. Uh, this religion, or I'm sorry, this podcast just really rubbed me the wrong way. And it was a podcast by a bunch of agorists, which overall I believe in agorism, uh, essentially the free market. I'm talking about the truly free market, not the quote-unquote free market we have now which has a bunch of protectionism and a bunch of other stuff that I'm not going to go into right now. But most of these uh, people are very, you know, they're either like atheists or they are um, deist or some other variation. And they have a very negative view of organized religion. The other podcast I listened to was the Dangerous History Podcast. I at least started listening to it. I'm about halfway through it. You know. And it wasn't talking about like religion like what most people think, where it is a theological. But it was talking about how the state, you know, governments um, oftentimes use Um, you know, religious tactics, um, you know, the, the ways that religion goes about, um, you know, their methodology that a lot of times a lot of these states will use, a lot of these governments will use um, the same tactics, the same philosophies, um, and the same strategies to portray themselves They'll never say they're a religion, 
or at least very rarely will they say that they're a religion. Um, but they'll use the same methods, the same methodology, um, to get the results that they're looking for. Anyways, going back to this Unloose the Goose one. Uh, and I'll go ahead and put a link to it down in the show notes down below. Um, didn't get all the way through it. Like I said, it was just really rubbing me the wrong way. Even though, like I said, I'm probably the least religious right now than I've ever been. But they did start off, you know, saying, okay, we're probably going to all be bagging on religion pretty heavily here. So let's start off and, you know, as far as organized religion goes, let's say some, what are the good things you see about organized religion. And uh, two of the four podcasters, uh, one, I don't think he even actually ever said anything good about religion, uh, said that the community that is built by a lot of these religions is a very good thing. And uh, talked about some religions that actually did it, usually do it fairly well, including the religion I was born and raised in. And sorry, I'm starting to get that, some of that smoke I was mentioning earlier. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but it's it's definitely there. Um <coughs> so And that kind of got me thinking as I was in here. This is actually my second time recording this video. The first time, I started going off on a bit of a rant, a bit of a tangent, and I'm like, that's not where I really want to go with this. It wasn't bad. You know, nothing I'm like ashamed of anyone ever saw, but it's just something I decided to want. That's not what I want to talk about today. But this idea of community and... Community is one of those things that I understand is important and that I need to do a better job of creating this community, you know, a community or being part of a community. And I'm not necessarily talking about like your neighborhood that you grew up, that you live in, but just being part of a community of a bunch of like-minded people who are there for each other, for the good times and the bad. And I've always been very standoffish. Um, due to personality and some of the traits that I, or some of the experiences I've had in my life, especially as a uh, young boy, into young manhood and that kind of stuff. You know, I've always tended to be more of a go at, go at my own to a large extent. Not exclusively. I've never been a hermit. I've never had a desire to go out and be a hermit. But I've always... My circle of friends is very small. And I'm not very active in that circle of friends. There are people who... You know, if I got the call, I would go out and help them. Um, but I haven't talked to a lot of these people in months. Anyway, um, and I've always known something I should be better at. A lot of the podcasts I listen to, a lot of the books I read and that kind of stuff talk about the importance of networking and actually having a community um, for both good times and bad. You know, if you have a good time, you want to share it with people. If something good happens in your life, you want to share it with people. Um, and if you need support, well, where are you going to get that support from? And it just really kind of got me thinking about it. And of course, they were talking about in the forms of you know, organized religion. Well, that's far from the only type of community that you can build. Uh, Jack Spirico, one of the hosts on this, um, actually has a very large and thriving community based off of his podcast. As same with Nicole Sauce, who was also on there. Um, now, try and pit. 
remember to put links to both of them down below. Um, and you know, as I'm sitting here. you know, thinking about this. And honestly, this podcast is really kind of helping me. You know, or not podcast, but this vlog is really helping me to try and crystallize my thoughts. And one of the criticisms, you know, that I have about, you know, my particular, uh, church and my local church is that you don't really have that sense of community. You know, you'll have your friends in it, but, you know, like I had a really good friend from my particular church group and he moved away. And, you know, ever since like you know, he moved, some of the other people that I was reasonably close to moved. And I just have never really felt drawn or part of a church community. And yes, some of the impetus does lie on them, but now looking back on it, a lot of it does lie on me. And I haven't, you know, reached out. I haven't tried to become part of the community or to build community. When my wife first moved into the ward, and she is very social, um, but she also has a very deep sense of the way it should be done. And in this particular case, I don't think she's wrong. But when we first moved into um, to this church. You know, her comment was, this, this group isn't very welcoming. You know, very few people actually came up and introduced themselves to us and the people who did. And most of the people who come up and talk to us, um, you know, when we go to church, it feels very perfunctory. You know, they're doing it because it's what they're supposed to do. Not because they want to, not because they actually care how we're doing, but... It's okay, we need to invite my daughter out to um, a function or to a, make, you know, invite her to class. Not because they care about my daughter, or at least that's not the way that my daughter feels about it, but just because that's their job. When a person at a store greets you, you know, usually you get the impression that it's not because they're actually thrilled to see you, but it's because it's their job. And you appreciate it on that level. And essentially that's what's going on is, you know, our particular group doesn't really feel like it has a strong community. And a lot of that, looking back on it, As, at least as far as myself and my family go, it's my fault. Because I haven't been reaching out. Like I said, I'm very standoffish. You know, if I go to church, I go to church for myself and for the benefits that I thought I was getting from it. I wanted to go there, you know, attend the meetings and go home, get out there, don't talk to me, don't, you know, leave me alone. And my personal view on your relationship with God is that it's a very personal thing. Yes, it can be helped by other people, but ultimately, your relationship with God is your relationship with God. Between you and God. And to be honest, most of the time I look at you know, attending church services as a necessary evil. You know, 
um, in my best points, it's like, okay, we were told to gather often and to attend these services, partake of these certain ordinances. And so, that's what I was doing. I was just doing, not because I wanted to be there, not because I wanted to meet any of these people, talk to any of these people. It was, I was checking a box. And, to be honest, I feel that way a lot still. But there's an old adage out there that says, um, if you want friends, be friends. You know, be a friend. And my attitude towards my ward has been very much not being a friend. Um, you know, I never actually myself reached out. And I'm not saying that if I all of a sudden became very, you know, I attend every single service, I attend every single, hey, someone needs help moving, which in reality I should be doing a lot more. I mean, I am a truck for goodness sake. Um, you know, that all of a sudden the ward is going to change. It's not. The ward is still going to be the same ward, no matter what I do. But you know what? Maybe I can find those people that um, I can be good friends with, and that I can be there to help them out, and they can be there to help me out, and that we can share our good times and our bad. And as I've been thinking about that, you know, Currently, I'm reading a book called Extreme Ownership uh, by Jaco Williams and one other person. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. I'll try and make sure I put a link to that book down below as well. But while the ward itself might not be able to, might not change just by being, being more aware of the community aspect of it, I will change. And... I'll be able to find the people who, you know, I can relate to and I can build a personal community with, and personal friends. And you know what? People will actually look forward to seeing on Sunday. Because right now, I haven't been doing that. Um, I, once um, those friends moved out of the ward, I haven't looked to replace them in the ward. So, and that's my fault. Now, this has been a bit of a rambling video, but as far as my call to action to you is whether it's church, whether it's family, right now I feel that most of my community that I do have is actually based off of my in-laws. And I don't really think of them as in-laws. I think of them as you know, my family. You know? My mother-in-law and my father-in-law are the first people outside of my, you know, the family I was raised with that I've called mom and dad. Even in my previous marriage, I never called my mother-in-law at the time mom. Um, I always just called her by her name. But this family, I actually feel that close to, where I'm actually willing to give the title mom to my mother-in-law and dad to my father-in-law. And to be honest, uh, my father-in-law has been more of a dad to me than anyone I've had before. And has stood by me good times and bad, both of them. But what is your community? And what are you doing to build that communal relationship? You know, to actually reach out and say, hey, do you need help? Or, hey, I need some help. And, like I said, it doesn't have to be religious. If it is, you know, what are you doing? Are you, 
sitting back and expecting your church to come to you, or are you actually going out to your church? I've been sitting back and letting my church come to me, and honestly, no one... I take that back. I'm being a little too harsh. People have tried, but I've actually pushed them away, because I'm that type of a person. Yeah. Um, but what are you doing to build that that community, including in your own family? You know, the family unit is the most basic. The it is the atom of society. Is that family unit and. I personally believe it's the most important unit. What are you doing to build that? You know, what are you doing to build these? Because, you know what? I could have been part of the best church group out there, and I would have pushed them away. I'm not saying I'm not going to in the future. I'm just that kind of a guy. Is, you know, leave me alone, let me do my thing. But, as my wife is, well, I am sure, undoubtedly pointing out when she watches this video, you can't get through life alone. And even if you could, you don't really want to. So what are you doing to build up that community? You know, to find your community and to find people you know, like-minded enough. And this is a conversation I had with Matt when we're talking about it, is that we're like-minded enough that we agree on most things. But we think differently enough about things that it's not an echo chamber. You know. And we can bounce ideas off of it. And I know that Matt's changed my perspective or my opinion on things, and I think I might have done the same thing with him. You know, just as we talk about different things. So... I'm going to go ahead and end it here, just because otherwise I'm just going to keep on rambling for an hour. Once again, thank you for joining me. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. And once again, figure out what your dreams are and what you need to do uh, to move yourself towards your dreams and do it. All right, good night, snap.